Hello everyone, back to tuning in to today's third and final video. We're going to have a look at the weather for the next 10 to 14 days for today's final video. Day 10 will take us to the 22nd of May and we'll be able to extend out beyond that with the extended GFS ECM Ensembles. Maybe we're trying to come weeks. We'll have a look at CFSB2 for June at the end of the video and I shall get on that for you in a moment. Just say that first video today was our 6am UK weather forecast and we've also uh, released Jeremy for it as well. Please check out those two videos if you'd like to do that. Like, share, and subscribe on videos. Thank you so very much, everybody, uh, for uh, doing that. We just hit uh, 15.8k. We're, we're right on the boundary. So, you know, it might tick back down again, but we're, we're on the cusp now uh, of 15.8k. Of, of, uh, uh, so, uh, please give us a sub. Help push us properly through the barrier. You know, we're sitting at 15,800 subscribers, so one either way can tip the balance. So please give us, uh, you know, a, a sub and uh, get us properly through the barrier. And then we shall start pushing on to uh, to 15.9k and ultimately to 16,000 subscribers. Wow, wow, wow. Absolutely incredible. Thank you so much, everybody, uh, for doing that. Right, going to start off something a little bit different for this one. We're going to look at the Arctic and North Atlantic Oscillation, which is something we haven't looked at for a little while. So the uh, black line shows where we've been with the uh, AO, the red lines at the end where the GFS ensembles are forecasting the AO to go. Arctic is just an index that's reflecting the atmospheric state. It does not drive anything in its own terms. It just tells what the atmosphere is doing. When the Arctic Oscillation is positive, got low pressure up over the North Pole. When the Arctic Oscillation is negative, we've got high pressure blocking over the Arctic and over the uh, North Pole. So you can see that currently the Arctic Oscillation is in a positive state after being really very negative through uh, the middle and uh, second half of April, actually. And that even carried on into the beginning of May. But we have seen um, a, a steady increase in positivity of the AO. So we are now sitting with a positive arch oscillation. And the GFS ensembles are forecasting that this positive AO is going to continue through the second half of May. That tells us we're going to have a low pressure up over the Arctic of North Pole rather than northern blocking. Now, at the same time, the NEO has moved as well. So, once more, the black line shows where we've been with the North Atlantic Oscillation and the red lines at the end where the GFS ensembles are forecasting the North Atlantic Oscillation to go. Again, it's just measuring air pressures this time between uh, the Azores and Iceland. So when we've got a positive um, NEO, we have got uh, low pressure around ice and high pressure around the Azores, and we strengthen the zone of west, particularly so in winter. And then uh, we've got a negative NEO, we have higher pressure around ice and, and lower pressure around the Azores. And, um, you know, that can be uh, the route that gets us like easterly, northerly winds and whatnot. Well, at the moment, the uh, NEO, quite interestingly, is like in a neutral state just here after being uh, really very negative again through the second half of April and into May. But GFS ensembles are forecasting that the NEO is likely to then go into a positive state as we go through the second half of May. So both of the indexes are going into positive territory. The AO is already in positive territory. They can stay there. And the NAO is neutral, but is set to go positive as well. This could be a signal for a significant change to the pattern that we have had through much of this spring. Particularly in terms of the NAO, you'll notice that much of the spring has had a negative North Atlantic oscillation pretty much all the way through, just beyond a few days here and there when the NEO has been positive, but basically the NEO has been in a negative phase right the way since the end of uh, February, uh, early part of March. Um, of course, that's been associated with what, with what has been a very uh, unsettled spring, you know, a very a, a, a very um, mixed spring, quite a lot of rain, had snow, of course, in uh, March as well. Not been desperately cold spring, but it has certainly been cold at times. Um, but anyway, it looks as though the NAO and the AO could be shifting 
And this might be a sign that the uh, effects of the sudden stratospheric warming that we had, uh, you'll remember, at the end of February, but led us into this very mixed spring, I think, with at uh, times blocking and subtly tracking jet stream with a negative NEO. It could be a sign that those effects are beginning to work their way out now, as you would expect. Early days on, on this, but you expect that the effects of the NEO well, the SSW, I should say, some traffic wing, would start to diminish after, uh, you know, a couple of months or so. So that looks about right for when you'd expect to see a fundamental pattern shift. And what this could, could be a sign of is for the Azores High to begin to start ridging in to West of Europe. If the Azores High starts ridging in to the West of Europe, it might lead us to um, a much drier and also a much warmer pattern as we go through the end of uh, May. And if it lasts long enough, which it may do, after, you know, such a long negative NAO period, we might go into a pronounced positive NAO period. If that ridging of the Azores High lasts long enough, and last into June, it might set us up for what could be quite a warm, summery uh, June. Certainly the early part of it, anyway. So, you know, it's all speculation. It's all, all um, predictions and, and forecasts and whatnot. But signs, perhaps, that the Azores height is beginning to start getting its act together as the AO and the NEO start going positive. We will keep an eye on that, obviously, over the next few weeks. Right, central temperature is currently sitting... At 12.5, uh, which is 1.3 degrees above average, that is unchanged yesterday. That is provisional to yesterday to the 11th of May. These are the GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles. And that we from Derby today. The red line is the 30 year upper air temperature average for Derby. So up a little bit above average with the upper air temperatures at the moment. They'll go cooler again though for the early part of next week. But it does look as though as we go into like the third week of May and then on to the last week of May, the trend with the upper air temperatures could be an upwards one. So possibly signs that things will start turning warmer, particularly in the final 10 days or so of the month. Precipitation-wise, quite a bit of dry weather for the next couple of days. We will have some wet weather, though, uh, from uh, Sunday into Monday. But a few days of drier conditions again. It turns cooler through the middle part of next week. And possibly back to something more unsettled by the end of the third week and into the final week of May. Although that, of course, is in the unreliable time frame. Temperature anomalies from the uh, 12th to the 20th May coming out below average for England, Wales and for Ireland, although Scotland could be a little bit above average. Uh, precipitation anomalies from the 12th to the 20th of May, generally dry and normal, especially so in the north and west. There is a swathe of near and normal precipitation through central parts of England. That's probably down to uh, a weather front getting stuck Sunday to Monday being risk of some uh, showery uh, rain from Sunday and into Monday. But generally, it's also a relatively dry uh, week through much of the country, especially so in the north and the west. The latest wind from that from Earth, no school dot net, so you've got a ridge of high pressure building through the country uh, today, especially so to the north and west. Around that, though, we're bringing in a rather chilling and cloudy north easterly to easterly wind um, into the east and southeastern part of the country. So, one of those days where west is best, the highest temperatures today and best sunshine will be in the west and eastern regions will be cool, cloudy. There has even been some rain this morning. Right, let's start going through chart data. Then, Miss Sal, ladies, you can make your run. is looking for midnight on Monday. So, this is where the uh, trough gets stuck. Just here, this allegation in the isobar telling us that there's a trough coming south was getting a little bit stuck. That could bring a uh, showery rain on Monday. But Tuesday to Wednesday, she's high pressure ridging in nicely from off the Atlantic. And then that high pressure sticks around through to the uh, second half of next week for the south, anyway. That the north start to turn a little bit more showery again, actually, by the end of next week with that area of. <laughs> Oh dear me, that area, I'm about to die. Uh, no, no, uh, that area of low pressure coming in from off the Atlantic there on uh, the 19th of May. I lost my voice there, didn't I? It was gracious me. I don't know, Gav was nearly silent. <laughs> right, I can't. Uh, looks like this again, got a trough through the country. On uh, Monday, that gets out of the way from Tuesday to Wednesday, has high pressure ridging in from the Atlantic. Although we keep high pressure quite close to the East Coast, actually, with Icon all the way through to the end of next week. It could bring further showers and 
quite cool East North East winds down this eastern side of the country. So most of next week is dominated by high pressure in the west with the driest, warmest weather there. And eastern regions that really do get a poor old time of it with that low sitting over the low countries and in the southern North Sea. That might be a bit of a synoptic outlier. GFS Midnight Run, again, shows that trough um, shouldn't clear away for a moment. It does eventually get out of the way, though, allowing high pressure to ridge in uh, through the middle part of next week. So it's only really mostly dry with some warm May sunshine through the middle part of next week. Um, and then we head up toward day 10, and the high pressure sticks around. We're always with an easy wind down in the south, so always a little bit cooler maybe with a few showers there, but basically the high pressure brings a lot of dry weather through the second half next week. Then the high pressure pulls out into the middle of the Atlantic and down comes a, <laughs> down comes a northerly again for the extended range of the GFS uh, midnight run. Oh, we finish up like that on Sunday the 28th of May, which is the day we're going to be releasing our gas web summer forecast, by the way. We finish up with a trough over the top of the country. Oh, uh, that was quite cool and showery. The 6 said GFS 6 said again, shows that low pressure of trough struggling to clear away our money. It does eventually get out, though, and by sort of uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, high pressure ridging in from the Atlantic, being quite a bit dry weather. It should be Azores high, by the way, that's a ridge from the Azores, so but the centre of the Azores high, of course, is just there around the Azores, but the ridge is building into the northwest Europe. That is the reason that the LEO is going positive, by the way. So, uh, of course, it's always weather that's driving the index, not the other way round. So the reason that we see the LEO going positive, it could be Azores high, is strengthening and ridging in to the west of Europe. At the same time, we have got low pressure up around Greenland and Iceland up here. Anyway, I digress. So high pressure ridges in on uh, Saturday uh, 20th of May, or he's ridging in. And that ridge actually carries on all the way up toward day 10 with the uh, GFS with the GFS 6 there. So it looks like quite a strong and stable ridge that we've got going there. But just beyond that, actually, the high pressure needed to pull back out into Atlantic and cooler, more showery conditions come back in with northwesterly or even northerly winds once again. They're all rather cool and showery into the closing days of May, the GFS 6 said too. If you're enjoying the video, please can you like, share, and subscribe. Thank you so very much, everybody. For dear Matt, why not drop a comment and let us know what you think about this and all of our videos. And we thank you so very much, everybody, for dear Matt, for a uh, gas weather fit. So, as I say, just hit 15.8k. If you could give us a sub and push us, you know, nicely through the barrier of, uh, of uh, 15,800 subscribers, that'd be absolutely great. Thank you so much, everyone. GM again has that to truck struggling to clear away. Through Monday and Tuesday, but by Wednesday, Thursday, the ridge of high pressure will be in from off the Atlantic Ocean. However, kind of similar to Icon, really, we get we may get a trough setting up just to our south and south east, which potentially brings some quite wet weather in across the southern and eastern part of the country. The driest, warmest weather is always in the north with this pattern. We finish up by the 22nd of May, maybe pulling up a rather warmer southerly flow but with low pressure out to the west of Biden. So he's trying to settle down desperately with the GEM, but, um, you know, just complications, 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 as always, with what has been a very, very, very difficult spring following that SSW that we had at the end of February. And then the ECM looks like this. So once more, that trough is clearing away, or starting to clear away, but does make you get away through Monday and Tuesday. High pressure's in then through Wednesday. And then through Thursday, Friday, nice ridge building in across the West Europe. Should bring quite a bit of dry and warm weather with it. Um, and that carries on, actually. It starts to build up towards the Scandinavian high as well. So quite a big ridge setting up there. Just maybe size, but it's weakening a bit by uh, day 10, which is 22nd of May. But there's at least four or five days of relatively dry and quite warm weather with the ECM today from the middle of next week. I'm more system of precipitation forecast based on the ECM run. And to Redshow.com, some shade rain to the southeast today. Otherwise, we should be mostly dry 
until Sunday when this front starts pushing south breeze across the country, bringing some rain and triggering maybe a few heavy thundery showers ahead of it. Uh, that takes into Monday. You notice how the wet weather gets a bit stuck across the southern and eastern parts of the country. So um, uh, we might get some quite heavy rain actually on Monday. Certainly showers, maybe longer spells of rain. And if that happens, then uh, Monday could actually be a notably cold day. Your temperature's struggling to get much out <laughs> of the single digits under about wet weather so that will be one to watch eventually that all gets out of the way it takes a long while by middle of next week high pressure there is ridging in from off the atlantic and then the high pressure keeps us main dry and settle through uh, most of next week and all the way up to day 10 now these are the options on the table within the ecm ensemble today for day 10 from the icelandic met office gets us to the 22nd of bay and there are a lot of them look at all these um so we've got 13 members of the ecm ensembles with high pressure over scandinavia reaching into the atlantic low pressures over france winds are in from the east so that brings the um dry to the north wettest weather is to the south with that we've got 10 with low pressure just to our south, southwest, high pressures further away from us to our northeast. That looks potentially quite warm with winds up from the south, but probably very unsettled. Eight have a nice, strong, stable ridge from the Atlantic into the UK and up to Scandinavia. That's one of the drier, warmer options. Uh, another eight, very similar, including the control and the operation run, just a little bit more of a Scandinavian high with that one. But basically, it's ridging to the Azores high as well and bring lots of dry weather. Uh, another eight again with a ridge from the southwest to the north east. So that's going to be mostly dry too. Quite deep low pressure with greens and isomo is putting that ridge under a lot of pressure. And then four with low pressure to the north of Scotland and that's much more unsettled. I think most of those options, the majority of them, if you put the eight here together with the eight, with the eight here and then the eight just here i think the majority option is towards a ridge being quite a lot of dry weather at day 10 and two in time these are the options that we've got they don't look too bad on the face it's the 27th of may this is the day uh, we'll be doing our charity live stream of course saturday the 27th of may we're going to be doing a three hour good gracious me i'm going to be tired after that you'll be doing a three hour charity live stream from 6 p.m until 9 p.m on saturday the 27th of may in memory of my mum the legendary mrs p who we lost last year we're going to be raising money for uh, Rainbow's Hospice, which covers the entire East Midlands area and uh, gives vital care to uh, children and young adults with life-limiting and terminal illnesses. So it's going to be absolutely epic. That's Saturday 27th of May. Put it in your diary anyway. But these are the options. Put it in your diary, please, everyone. Um, but anyway, these are the options that we've got uh, for the 27th of May. High pressure, 23 members of the East Coast Arms with high pressure dominating over Scandinavia and winds in from the east. That brings a lot of dry and warm weather. 16 with high pressure just to the north of Scotland. Again, that looks mostly dry and potentially quite warm. And then 12 with high pressure to over and to the east. Country low pressure is out to the northwest. Again, that should bring quite a bit of dry weather with it. So the trend could be increasingly towards higher pressure through uh, the final week to 10 days of May. We shall see. So let's be to you finally for June. This, uh, this is today's 700 millibar height anomaly for June. So we go for a mid-Atlantic ridge today. We have also high pressure over Scandinavia, but in between that, there is a bit of a trough of low pressure actually coming into the west of Europe. This is a bit of a change on what the CFS has been indicating over recent days and weeks for June, which have been shown basically a very uh, dry and warm June pattern, or a very warm June pattern with southerly influences. That looks slightly on the cooler a more unsettled side, I have to say. Although the temperature, a temperature anomaly is still a little bit above average. And the precipitation anomaly, as ever, shows no particular signal. We shall see, and time will tell. Okay, we're done. If you've enjoyed the video, please can you like, share, and subscribe. Thank you so very much, everybody, for doing that. Why not drop a comment and let us know what you think about this and all of our videos. And please don't get to tell your friends about Gaz Webbins and get them to subscribe as well. And it's amazing and it's incredible. And we thank you so much, everybody, for doing that uh, for us.
Right, that's it for today's big spend. I think although we have got to do our first uh, update for the um, late spring back holiday weekend. Any time. So, uh, I don't think that'll be tonight, though. But we've got to get one of those in, in the next day or two. But anyway, I'll uh, just like to it tomorrow. So, we're definitely going to have the 6 m UK weather forecast. There will be a uh, weekend forecast, the East Saturday 42 day forecast, and the 10 to 14 day as well. It's going to be an epic day of content coming up tomorrow. So, keep checking back to the channel for more. Uh, for, but for this video, and probably for today's videos, that's all for now. And thanks for watching.